In this video, we're going to look at solving exponential equations in quadratic form. In question 15, we're asked to solve the following equations, giving our answers to three significant figures where appropriate. So in question A, we've got 3 to the power of 2x minus 3 to the power of x minus 2 is equal to 0. We could go ahead and factor this straight away. Alternatively, we can use a substitution. I'm just going to rewrite this so it looks like a quadratic equation. If we got 3 to the 2x, we could write that as 3 to the x raised to the power of 2. We know that a to the power of m raised to the power of n is a to the power of m multiplied by n. Minus now 1 lot of 3 to the x minus 2 is equal to 0. So at this stage, I'm going to use a substitution and let p be equal to 3 to the x. So this is my substitution. Therefore, we'll have p squared minus p minus 2 is equal to 0. I'm going to solve this quadratic in p. It looks like it will factor. So we're going to have p plus 1, p minus 2 is equal to 0. So we can see that now p is equal to negative 1 or p is equal to 2. If we make the substitution back, what we can say is 3 to the x is equal to negative 1. Now, 3 to the x can never be equal to negative 1, or 3 to the x is equal to positive 2, and that will work. With this one, what this is saying is what power of 3 will give us now negative 1? The answer is there's no real power that that will work for. So if we look at 3 to the x, 3 to the x is the exponential curve. It does something like that, gets very steep very quick. That's 0, 1. It's asking me now where it passes through or crosses this particular line, y is equal to negative 1. And the answer is nowhere. So there are no real solutions to that equation. So y is equal to 3 to the x. So let's deal with this. In the last video, we saw how to solve these equations. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. We can say using the logarithmic equivalent statement that log to the base 3 of 2 will be equal to x. Let's look at that on a calculator. Log to the base 3 of 2. That's going to give me now 0 0.631. So x is equal to 0 0.631. And that now is to three significant figures. So one solution to that particular equation. If you'd spotted it, you could have factored it. You could have said that this was 3 to the x plus 1 multiplied now by 3 to the x minus 2 is equal to 0 and it would have taken us straight to this and this now as the solutions to this particular equation. Alternatively, you can use a substitution by letting p be equal to 3 to the x. Okay, uh, 2 to the 2x is equal to 7, lots of 2 to the x minus 12. Let's just rearrange this. 2 to the 2x minus 7 lots of 2 to the x and then we're going to have plus 12 is going to be equal now to 0. So I'm going to write this as 2 to the x, which we would square, minus 7 lots of 2 to the x, plus 12 is equal to 0. Again, if you're comfortable to factor, go ahead and factor. Let p be equal to 2 to the x. So we're going to have now p squared minus 7p plus 12 is equal to 0. That looks like it will factor p minus 3, p minus 4 is equal to 0. So we can see from this now that p will be equal to 4 or p will be equal to 3. Therefore now we've got 2 to the x is equal to 4 or we've got 2 to the x is equal to 3. This is a nice straightforward one to deal with. What power is 2 raised by to get 4? The answer is 2. So we can use now our brains to do that one. With this one, x would simply be now log to the base 2 of 3. We rewrite the logarithmic equivalent. So log to the base 2 of 3. Let's write that into there. That's going to give me 1.58. So x is equal to 1.58, again, to three significant figures. And we have those two solutions. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, we'll rearrange this one. What we've got then is 6 lots of 4 to the 2x. So we've got a coefficient now on the uh, term in 2x plus 13 lots of 4 to the x 
minus of 5 is equal to 0. So we've got 6 lots of 4 to the x, which we need to square, plus 13 lots of 4 to the x, which is to the first power, minus 5 is equal to 0. Let p be equal to 4 to the x. That then is going to give us now 6p squared plus 13p minus 5 is equal to 0. Uh, is that going to factor? Yeah, it looks like it will. Let's have a go. 3p minus 1, uh, 2p plus 5. Let's see if that works. And that will be equal to 0. Um, yeah, that's good. So let's consider these. We've got p would be equal to negative 5 over 2 or p would be equal to positive one-third. Therefore, making our substitution back, we can say now 4 to the x. Well, 4 to the x can never be equal to negative 5 over 2, and then we've got 4 to the x is equal to one-third. So all we need to do is solve this, and it's essentially saying 4 to what power is one-third, so we can write x is equal to log to the base 4 of one-third. OK, let's go ahead and do that. So if we do that, log to the base 4 of 1 third, and then we can have that answer. So that is going to be negative, what have we got? 792. So negative 0 0.792, again, correct to three significant figures. So only one solution there. Right, OK, let's look at the next one. This one is slightly more challenging. If we look at all of the others, we've just got now something to the power of 2x. This time, we've got something to the power of 2x plus 1. Let's just rearrange this. 2 to the 2x plus 1 minus 2 to the x minus 1 is equal to 0. I'm going to use the rules of indices and work this backwards. What we've got is 2 to the power of 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2x. When we're multiplying, now we add the powers minus 2 to the x, minus 1 is equal to 0. So all I've done is split this up. So now what we've got is two lots of 2 to the x squared, minus 1 lot now of 2 to the x, minus 1 is equal to 0. We know that if we have a to the m multiplied by a to the n, this is going to be a to the power of m plus n. Therefore, what I've done is split this back up and rewritten it like so. At this stage, let p be equal to 2 to the x. So we've got 2p squared minus p minus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, that'll factor. So let's have a go at that. 2p plus 1, I think. And then p minus 1 is equal to 0. Let's check 2p squared minus 2p plus p uh, minus 1. So let's deal with this. So this one should be very nice. P is going to be equal to negative 1 half, or we've got P is equal to 1. Therefore, now, we've got 2 to the x is going to be equal to negative half. Well, 2 to the x can never be equal to negative 1 half for real values, or 2 to the x is equal to 1. This is nice. What power is 2 raised by to get 1? Well, x is going to be equal to 0. So that now is the only solution that x is going to be 0. Uh, 2 to the power of naught is 1, and that's what we get. So that one's a slight bit trickier, but again, it's just rules of indices. So, for example, if you had, um, let's say we've got 3 to the 2x plus 4 plus now 3 to the x minus 6 is equal to 0. We would just write this now as 3 to the 4th multiplied by 3 to the 2x plus 3 to the x minus 6 is equal to 0. So this would give us 3 to the 4th, which is 81. Then we'd have now 3 to the x, which we'd need to square, plus 3 to the x minus 6 is equal to 0. So you could turn this into a quadratic, um, letting p be equal to 3 to the x. 81p squared plus p minus 6 is equal to 0. And then you could go ahead and look at seeing if you could... Uh, find solutions to that. That's just an example if you have something like so. Um, so there we go. That's nice and nice and logical. The only other scenario I can think of is if you had, for example, now 2 to the x um, 
minus 1, let's put that there, minus 1 is equal to, uh, let's go for, let's make this nice and easy, let's make this uh, 1, uh, 1 over 2 to the x. If you had something like this, um, we'd have to uh, multiply through by the uh, 2 to the x, so we'd have 2 to the 2x minus 2 to the x is equal to 1, and then you would deal with this in the same way that um, you've dealt with that one just there, or similar to it. Um, Hopefully you can see. Um, again, if you had, for example, 3 to the x uh, is equal to 1 plus 3 to the negative x, what I would do is write this as 3 to the x is equal to 1 plus 3, uh, 1 over 3 to the x, and multiply through. So 3 to the 2x is equal to 3 to the x plus 1, and rearrange. So just look out for some slightly different variations. But that is now solving exponential equations in quadratic form. Make substitution if you want, or factor it um, as an exponential. Go ahead and consider the validity of the solutions.